you know, it's, it's often really hard to put your finger on it. What was wrong? I mean, there was something wrong, but you know, we couldn't put a finger on it. But I think like most parents, we really hope for the best and you know, we were try we were kind of I think a little bit in denial. I don't think any parent really know expects or, or has any experience dealing with autism. Because at first we're thinking, is he deaf or is he hard of hearing? Is he does he have trouble seeing things? Um, you know, because he can he'll bring things up really close and he'll just go, oh, you know, like this, and and uh, then he'd be sniffing it and everything and, and mouthing it and th this is usually stuff that a toddler would do, and here he's almost out of that stage, and we're going, what in the heck is going on here? But that wasn't really a sign of trouble. The sign of trouble was he wasn't talking at all. And finally, when they say he's autistic, we go, okay, great. What's gonna happen now? They don't know. Transition is an important attitude that we all have because we want to transition them to be adults so that they can compete in a very competitive world. They can shop and work and volunteer and do all the things that typical adults do. And it's important for us to take them out of the safety of the school environment and make them feel safe in the community. A very important thing that we teach there is how to find uh, inner joy in all the things that we do giving them a job and having them be uh, a volunteer in the community helps them to have self-worth. Uh, every individual, including our students, know that having a job makes you feel important and they feel important when they're contributing members of society. He was nonverbal when we got him, and that's what, what we expected. However, over time, I have seen more growth in John in all the five years I've been doing this than any student I've ever worked with. For example, last year, we worked and worked and worked on getting him to cut his hair, and it seemed like an impossibility, and we tried all these tricks, like we give him a Diet Coke, or we do this, or we do that, and nothing worked. We finally found out that he loved um, Thomas the Train. And over a slow period of time, he gained, we gained his trust, and he allowed us to cut his hair a little, at a, time, a little at a time. And then by the end of the time frame, which wasn't that long, relatively speaking, we were cutting his hair, we were washing his hair, we were grooming him, we were getting a lot of response back from him. You fall in love with John because he's lovable, he shows emotion. Many kids, he's the most loving kid we've ever seen. I just can't explain it in any other way other than it's extraordinary because he's not verbally able to say, you know, and get all of his needs met. Some things we don't understand, but um, it's really amazing to come across an individual that you can have this other kind of relationship with and you can trust each other so much that uh, you don't need words.